why they did it. No idea. No idea. Can't figure it out. No idea. It is the first attack by a Muslim in the world. No idea where he got those ideas from. He must have picked up that Bible. Must have been that Christian Bible he was reading three times a day. Oh, wait, no, no. It was that Buddhist stuff that he found on a shelf. Yeah, that must have been what did it. No, it could have been that the Hindu sutras that did it. Yeah, sure, that's what they No idea. No ideas. No idea. Never heard of a thing like this. That's the care front group. They got they marched him out. No idea. That's the the, the brother, no less, of the of the doll who radical oh it looks to me like she radicalized him. But the the brother this one knows nothing. He's another kind, calm guy. Has no idea why this happened. Move along, nothing to see here. There was no third shooter. That was a figment of your imagination for six straight hours. <clears throat> six hours, you didn't see a third person. Then then we wake up and the F FBI says there was no third person. It was just someone in the street. Some random person that they, they knocked to the ground, running out with them. Oh, and the neighbor who saw um, six Middle Eastern men coming and going in all times of the night from their garage when, where they were building their pipe bombs, didn't report it for fear of being called a racist. It just shows you how we've been destroyed. See, I blame liberalism. At the end of the day, you trace it back. It's the disease of liberalism that's killing us. People are not stupid. They have survival skills. But neighbors saw half a dozen Middle Eastern men coming and going from the apartment. Didn't know what they were doing there. He wanted to call the police. But he was intimidated that they'd call him a racist. And so he didn't call. If he did call, I guarantee they would have arrested him anyway. He did the right thing. They probably would have arrested him for some kind of crime against Muslims just for reporting six men coming in and out of the apartment at all hours. That's right. And they left remote-controlled bombs at the party. They wore GoPro cameras during the massacre. So this is definitely workplace violence. And he ordinarily does drive around in a large, blacked-out SUV. And he always wears body armor when he goes to a to a uh, office party. And he always takes his trusty AR-15. And, he, of course, he's got to have his pipe bombs. Him and Him and the old lady had to make pipe bombs to go around those those Christians got to have those pipe bombs and the AR-15s and Diane Feinstein I hope you're not listening to the show because I'll ask you an embarrassing question you outlawed the AR-15 I used to have one I bought it in 1982 I had to get rid of it because you outlawed it in America great great weapon fabulous weapon where did this Muslim get his AR-15 the two of them where'd they get the, the AR-15 Diane where they buy it I don't know where they buy it. Does anyone know? Can't, can't investigate that. Who gave them the, the guns? Who bought it for them? No, we don't know. We need an investigation. Nothing to see here. Move along. Move along. So where does that leave we, us, we the people today? We know that we have no government. I mean, really, we do know that we have a rogue government that's so out of control that we are each man for himself. That's the truth. That is the take-home message. I don't really care if you're a liberal or whatever you are. It doesn't matter. Race, religion. You know that you are now walking around naked and you are in fear. You know that and I know that. I don't care who you are. You could be the most, let us say, progressive individual on the planet. You know that you now fear what happened in Paris, what happened in San Bernardino, could happen to you, God forbid, in this country at any time because you know your intelligence agencies have been, I don't have the right word for it. There's no correct word for what's been done to them under Obama's rules of non-engagement. What he's done to the U.S. Air Force, he's done to the FBI, he's done to the CIA, DHS, every agency. They have very brave, intelligent men and women in the streets. But you know and I know what their rules of engagement are. You know that they can't report what they see. You know that. So where does it leave you? You know that we have only one thing that, the, that, that we have one thing that France doesn't have, and that's the Second Amendment. You know, we have nothing else to protect us but ourselves. Why do you think those evil old white males who gave us the Constitution and the Bill of Rights created a Second Amendment to the Bill of Rights? Why? What do you think that Second Amendment was written for? For target practice? To hunt rodents? You think it was written to hunt squirrels in Nevada, California? Rabbit squirrels? That Second Amendment was written specifically for the United States of America today where we have zero government. I rest my case I'm going to take a break, have a cup of tea, and be back to take your calls right here on the Savage Network. 
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. It is possible that this was terrorist related, but we don't know. Uh, it's also possible that this was workplace related. Uh, liar, liar, pants on fire. Can you sit and listen uh, to this liar been again? Able to conduct uh, what are going to be a large number of interviews. All right, turn, I really can't listen to it again. I'm sorry. It's not funny. It's not humorous. It's not worthy of our ears to listen to this man. If we had a sane nation, he wouldn't have been elected to begin with. He wouldn't have been reelected to begin with. And he certainly would have been impeached by now. But, okay, we're not a sane nation. We're a nation of drugged zombies. Drugged, fat zombies marching around like sheep to the slaughter. This is the same man who just a week ago told the world there were no specific or credible threats against the United States. The same liar in the White House a week ago said there are no specific or credible threats against the United States. And the FBI director had to correct him and say we have a number, a great number of people under investigation or following. Do we have that soundbite? Here is your leader, your progressive president, a week ago. Anytime there's an event, we learn something from it. And we continue to refine them. We continue to improve upon our approaches as we speak. Now, right now, we know of no specific and credible intelligence indicating a plot on the homeland. That was a week ago. And Stop that right there. So that means that they've all failed us. If you were running a corporation and you had a CEO who was this stupid, this incompetent, you'd fire him. Wouldn't you replace your CEO? you get rid of him. If you were the board of directors, which we allegedly are in the United States of America, we are the board of directors. He is just the CEO. This guy is so bad, you, you dump him, get out of there. How many times can you fail us? You know what the stock of this nation is? It's a penny stock. It's been devalued. It's been taken off the big board. It's a penny stock. The United States is a penny stock because of the CEO. Do you want, I'm trying to do, give you a business analogy. You change all the department heads in order to save your corporation. Why are we stuck with this dunce? The FBI just reported that the, the terrorist, Fruk, whatever his name is, Freak, Freak uh, and his wife, Tashfeen, the Freak visited both Saudi Arabia and Pakistan. His wife, the Freakish terrorist, was here on a Pakistani visa. This is, this is grating to me, that this Freakish wife of his, Malik, Tashin Mal Tashfin Malik, a native of Pakistan, was allowed into this beautiful nation on a so-called fiancé visa, an um, instrument created by the Islamists inside the United States government. And later, this freak became a lawful permanent resident. This is being reported by CNN. They created a new loophole to permit more of these freaks to come into the country called a fiancé visa. You thought it was bad enough anchor babies? You didn't know about the fiancé visa till I reported it to you, did you? Look into it, see if I'm making it up. But <clears throat> there's a new poll out. Of course, we don't believe in polls. 57% of people now see guns as a solution, not a problem. No matter what the left-wing fanatics on medication will try to tell you, no matter how many of them try to strip you of your gun rights, with their relentless propaganda, 57% now see guns as a solution, not a problem. Washington Post, Pew Research Center, pretty valid. I mean, you could say it's liberal. We normally say, come on. But even the liberal Pew Research Center has published this in, for 2014. A uh, percent of Americans who say gun ownership could protect people from becoming victims of crime. It's now 57%, according to the Pew Research Center. Americans increasingly see guns as the solution, not the problem. Uh, the only people who don't are those who are afraid of guns. I call them gunophobes. You could have a picture of a gunophobe. That would be a Woody Allen. A guy like Woody Allen or a guy like uh, that type, I'm using a type, are afraid of guns. <laughs> the neurotic type. The neurotic New York is afraid of a gun. He thinks a gun could go off and kill him. He doesn't know how a gun works. Worse yet, he fears if he had a gun, he'd use it on himself. Because they usually, uh, 
going to therapists for 40 or 50 years. They're on uh, anti anti uh, depressants, tranquilizers. They're all afraid of guns. Guys in Hollywood who make their living extolling violence are afraid of guns. They're the only ones who are against it. But they have bodyguards who are not afraid of guns. Katzenberg, Katzenberg, Matzenberg, Ratzenberg, and uh, Weinstein, that type. The laughable types who have ruined the American mind and polluted the entire world atmosphere with their pollution and their pornography. So what, what can I tell you today that I haven't told you already? Uh, probably a lot, but I don't want to overload you because I know many of you are very, very emotionally, frankly, uh, uh, as, uh, as wrecked as many uh, people as I hear are. I had a call this morning from someone in the media who is a friend of mine, and he said to me, did you sleep well last night? I said, of course I did. He said, you're the only one who did. He said, everyone I know is nervous, didn't sleep well. I said, that's why I'm still here, and most of them won't be here at my age. I said, I have techniques. He said, well, what'd you take? I said, I took nothing. I don't use drugs. I don't use medication. I don't use sleeping pills. I slept like a baby, frankly. I slept like a baby. I do my work. I was up till midnight on uh, Facebook updating my listeners. I don't know whatever the number is. It's not a, a number matter. Not everything has a quantification to it. Putting a few articles up, reading as much as I could, digging into it. And then I frankly uh, went into bed and turned the lights off and I slept till uh, the sun came up. Now it's true as I awaken, as the light comes through the curtain, I did have some thoughts. And the first thoughts I had were, what would be the first executive actions I would take if I were president after this creature leaves us. What would Trump do if he wins? Then I change it to what will Trump do if he wins? What would his moves be? Because he's got to do something immediately. And there were a whole host of things that came to my mind. The first issue, as I've told you before, is national security. I've told How many years have I told you on this show that to me, if I grade issues that are of importance to me. The number one issue is national security. That goes hand in glove with radical Islam. So the first thing I would do is investigate all the mosques in America. And I would make certain that we would do what France does. And I'd close down those that are radicalizing people. The second thing I would do is force the owners of Twitter, Facebook, and the other greedy billionaires to engage in the war against radical Islamic terror. They have the power to do so. Oh, so I'm sorry, your daughter won't be able to talk about her, her fingernail polish. If they, if they interfered with the, the Twitter feeds, they couldn't gossip about their, their, their lipstick or what dance they went to. What a, what a loss that would be. So all of these pleasure principle um, enterprises that have been created to create these new billionaires are being used by the vermin to attack us. You think about that one. Now, that's quite ironic in its own way. The very weaknesses of the West are being exploited by these psychotics to kill us. Okay, the very tools of weakness, I meant to say. The very tools of weakness are being used by them. They're very, very clever. That's how their ancestors took over so much of the world in 25 years uh, from the time of Muhammad's death in only 25 years. And I've given you that historical narrative before, and I'm not going to bore you with it again in my brief history of the world. The Arab invasions in a 25 year period using small armies engaged in this kind of horrific terror. They took over a, a large swath of the world and we're bringing them in. You hear? You hear a sane nation does this in a time of Islamic terror? You bring them in by the hundreds of thousands? Oh my God, what kind of brains does it take to say no more immigration of any kind? Period. End of story. And then start deportations, massive deportations as fast as you can do it. You start by deporting the fiancé visa types from t known terrorist countries. You get rid of them. Throw them out of the country. How much, how much will it take till the country says, wait a minute, enough is enough? We need somebody with brains to put this together and start the machinery running in the other direction. Run the conveyor belt backwards. Run the, 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 the conveyor belt south. Run them north. Run them east. Run them west. Get them out of here before there's so many of them that it's too late. There's a saturation point, and this has been studied. It's a very delicate issue, a very delicate issue. But if you study nations around the world and their Muslim populations, you'll find a very interesting statistic. And amongst that 
in that statistical analysis, you'll find a saturation point, after which point 